Here it is, the moment you've been waiting for. The finale of Volume 5. With Volume 6 releasing next week to first members, I am happy to say we've done it. My hopes are high for Volume 6, so let's finish the home stretch, shall we? Remember when Oscar uh, headbutt Ruby? This is what it led up to. Anyways, the episode starts with that and a vague explanation of John's semblance. Again, show don't tell, please. Ren gets knocked out by Hazel so hard he loses his hair for a moment. Oscar explains Hazel's semblance and Nora hulks out on Hazel, knocking him through the door. Hazel juices up some more and everyone seems to be on their last legs. But Blake shows up with her Faunus army to oppose Adam and the other followers of Salem. Adam tries to rally his troops, but the police arrive as well. Being the whiny baby that Adam is, he tries to activate the bombs prematurely. Luckily, Elliot deactivated them. Having failed here, Adam attacks Blake, only to be knocked down by a single hit. This... Big Bad they had worked so hard on, and he's bested so easily. <sighs> Weiss pulls Hazel back into the fight, literally, and Blake rejoins the group. For a little bit. Finally, Ruby is back together. Yang takes the opportunity to chase after Raven and Cinder. Then we get the best fight of the season. Raven versus Cinder. The fight is great. It's got some actual good choreography. A weapon swap scene. Lots of effects going on. But they do have a little problem of doing the Dragon Ball clashes. Uh, anyway, Cinder tries to steal the maiden powers from Raven and is nearly crushed. The two partake in a gravity-defying fight scene reminiscent of the creator's early works of dead fantasy. But it doesn't last long. Raven ices Cinder as she's tossed into a pit, likely to never be heard from again. She got snoped. Vernal passes, having helped one final time during the fight, and Raven approaches the door to the relic, opening it. But before she can retrieve it, Yang appears. Episode uh, 14. The White Fang are being arrested and Adam takes a blow to his ego. Several. He runs off with his tail between his legs and Blake tells Sun not to chase him. Meanwhile, inside, everyone is still having trouble against Hazel, Leo, etc. Blake comes in for the actual battle and Leo runs. Now outnumbered and outgunned, we cut away from the final confrontation to Yang dealing with her mom. Raven's like, eh, I wasn't worried about you guys upstairs. Then Yang's like, did you kill the Spring Maiden to get her powers? Yep. That doesn't sound like you. I've seen some stuff. Whatever, me too. You just run away. Don't talk back to your mother. You're afraid of Salem. Give me the relic instead. Fine. Then Raven TPs out of there while Ra uh, Yang grabs the relic and cries for a bit. Probably because she didn't get to speak with her mother in the way she wanted. Upstairs, Leo is slain by Salem Seergrim after fleeing and making excuses in a very gruesome off-screen death. Uh, off -screen death rather. The screams and gasping pleas really sell it, especially the sudden silence. Yang comes back in at the elevator, and seeing that they've lost and Cinder having likely died, Emerald freaks out with an illusion of Salem, allowing the villains time to escape. Oz reveals that the illusion was indeed Salem, and now that everything has finally calmed down, Team Ruby is finally reunited, and they all share a nice hug. The music lyrics are a bit bland here, but it has the right feel to it. Oscar relays a message from Oz before passing out that the team needs to head for Atlas with the lamp, the relic. After credits, Raven visits Ty, but that could mean Jack Doodley if past events are anything to go by. So, let's go into the final analysis of Volume 5 of Ruby. Animation. While there is much lacking throughout these final two episodes, the fight between Raven and Cinder really sells the whole season for me. It felt like it was close to the level we once had in Volumes 1 and 2. Voice acting is great. It's nice to actually hear some change in Raven's voice for once. Her bravado finally shattered when confronted by her daughter. Adam still equals Hayden Christensen, though. 
Story, I love these two episodes for some of the story. I really hate how much of a chump Adam was made there at the end, but everything else worked beautifully. Yang finally getting the face to face with her mom, only to have to be the adult in their conversation. Jean Semblance finally unlocked the subtlety of Emerald's love for Cinder, which didn't need to be spelled out. Everything worked so well. All in all, I give this a 9 out of 10 finale. I'm Panda Brady, and I'll see you party people next time when I cover the first episode of Volume 6.